he had separated himself from a lot of the cats who helped him get to where he is today. You have to have the soul of a poet and the mind of a killer. You learn some valuable things on the street. You learn how to pay attention to everything around you because not being aware of what's going on around you could be bad for your health. He's a hustler. Everything that he does is calculated. One of the things that he told me was that people always think that young black kids who are drug dealers are monsters and that these kids aren't monsters, that they're just looking for a way. His good friend David Irby from childhood, lived down the hall from him, taught Jay-Z the ropes in terms of supply and demand. People are willing to let you do pretty much anything if it's going to lead to financial success. So if you're selling drugs to little children and you get rich from it, people might say, well, that's not the best way to make money, but look how rich he is. That's not something he's going to be able to shy away from. He's like, Daddy, what did you do before rap? The same qualities that allowed him to thrive as a drug dealer help him today as a legal business person. The Barclays deal was one of the most horrible deals ever done. They played Jay-Z like a fiddle. They played the community like a fiddle. I think it's a case of Jay-Z pimping corporate America as much as corporate America is pimping Jay-Z. We didn't even know that it was going to be related to Jay-Z or Carl Barclays or anything. We just were told that we would need to move. That We knew that eventually if we refused, which we of course did, that they would buy the building right from out, up, up under it. He has a lot of love for Brooklyn, but I gotta be honest, I feel a lot of it's about the money. And I can tell you the, the grumbles and groans of the community that knew that Brooklyn would not be the same and that this would usher in a gentrification. These buildings were, were deemed blighted. They weren't big enough to generate enough tax revenue. Politics is a messy business for Jay to have discovered this in the course of pursuing this professional basketball team for Brooklyn, what did he expect? If we're gonna be the ones idolizing him, then we need to look at ourselves and say, why are we idolizing someone who we know promotes commercialism? I do believe that the conversation that began with Harry Belafonte leveling a criticism against Jay-Z about uh, his lack of community service uh, has some merit. Harry is wise enough to have seen a better version of black America where everything wasn't corporatized, everything wasn't about the dollar bill. I think maybe he would, he would have liked to engage with Mr. Carter. When Harry Belafonte dies, people will remember him as an iconic figure that had an impact on the world. Jay-Z will just be remembered as a nigger in Paris. A lot of people want a hero, but ultimately it's up to that person to decide whether they want to do it or not. People who are members of an oppressed people, when a member of that group rise to some kind of stature, they owe something back to their people.